Hey, thinking of becoming an owner operator? Take a couple minutes and watch this video. Five things that you would want to know before you become an op owner operator. First and foremost, before you even think about buying anything or doing anything, is you, you have to know that your life is going to change. When you're transitioning from a company driver to an owner operator, the responsibilities absolutely they, they grow exponentially. As a company driver, you finish your week, you park the truck, you turn it off, you get in your pickup, you go home. I take my truck, I go home, I put it in the driveway, and I don't just forget about it. I've got maintenance to do, I've got things to do. Uh, uh, the things that I have to do with my truck don't stop at the end of the week when I turn it off. You know, when I'm parked somewhere and I'm not doing anything, I'm constantly looking at stuff on my truck. What's this, what's that? Um, talking with other people like that, that own the same trucks. What problems are they having? I'm looking to see if I've got any of those issues going on with my truck. So that would be one of the first things. Uh, know that your life is definitely going to change. You're, you're going to be under, uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot more stress, but you're going to be under more stress. For uh, the next thing you're probably going to want to look at as uh, uh, transitioning from, from company to owner operators is what carrier are you? Are you going to stay with the carrier you're at? Are you going to go to a new carrier? Um, is the carrier that you're at going to offer you what you need? To, to sustain yourself or to, to, to make the money that you want to make, that you think that you're gonna make. So you, you need to, to, to find the carrier that you're gonna work at. If you're new in the business, start with a small carrier. If you've been doing this a little longer and you know a little more, you can probably go with a bigger carrier if, if that suits you. Um, and then after that, you start thinking about, okay, your truck. Um, what am I going to be doing? Am I going, am I going to be running flat ground, running the Midwest and then, or am I going to be running the East Coast? Am I going to be running down Pennsylvania? I'm going to be doing a lot of hills. What am I going to be doing with that truck? Where is it going to be going? So you've got to start looking at how it's, spec, uh, how it's specced out. Um, the equipment that's on the truck, uh, the motor, the horsepower, all of that kind of stuff. You're going to have to actually look at that stuff to know that you've got the right truck to do what you want to do because if you don't and here's a great example the truck I've got right now was built and spec to do something else that I was doing before this th than I'm doing right now and I'm paying a bit of a price for it because I'm not getting the fuel mileage out of it I'm not getting certain things out of it that I should because my truck is not spec to do to do what I'm doing now I use it for what I'm doing as the time goes because I'm going to be going into a new truck um, but Look at that first. Make sure your truck that you've chosen is, is designed, first of all, what you want, and it's designed for what you're gonna be doing. Next thing, check out your financing. Make sure your financing is solid. Um, if you don't have a good credit rating, you're gonna pay more. Interest rates uh, for trucks are not like your car. I, I bought a new car, I got 0.9% financing on that car. You're never gonna find 0.9% financing on a truck the interest rates are significantly higher because the, the risk factor and the, 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 the turnover of trucks coming back in of guys that don't make it while they still owe $100,000 on a truck it is much higher. So the interest rates are higher. Know all of this, get your, get your financing lined up and know up front if you're gonna buy the truck or lease the truck. How long do you wanna keep the truck? What's your plan? Have a, have a, have a five year plan. How long are you gonna do this? You know, set that all out, set that all in place and put it on paper in front of you and stick to it if you can. The next thing you might want to look at is if you're going to be an owner operator, you're going to, you're, you're self-employed. Um, how are you going to run your business? Are you going to run as an incorporated business? Or are you going to run sole proprietor? Investigate both ways, which way is more profitable for you or, or will work better for you. I run myself as an incorporation. It works better for me for what I want to do. I have friends that make that run as sole proprietors. Um, I see and we talk and we discuss and some of these guys are good friends of mine so they have no problem disclosing what they make and what they do and I have no problem disclosing. And I can see the differences in how their business runs and how my business runs. I myself personally think we do better as an incorporation but that's just my opinion. Um, 
Know up front though how you want to do that. Investigate that. Talk to people. Call Revenue Canada. They'll tell you. They're, they're, they've got people. And get. don't try to do your taxes. Don't try to do your own taxes. Too many guys in the trucking industry do their own taxes and they lose so much money. Pay somebody who does this. Don't just run down the street and grab the, uh, you know, John Smith accounting. Find a company and there's several of them around. Um, I've, had the same, I've had the same accountant at the same company for my entire term as, as, as an owner operator since the day I bought, first bought my truck. Same guy, same firm, and all they do is trucking, trucking and farming. So when things change in the trucking business, they know they're up to speed, they take care of it. Um, but investigate that, who's gonna do your taxes? Um, taxes will either make you or can, can make you or break you. The next thing I think that you would probably have to know about is when you're the owner operator, you are the first word, you are the owner. Um, the onus is on you, the responsibility is yours, the truck is yours and the banks, you know, until it's paid for, but it's yours. So you, gotta, you have to know right up front that everything is on you. If that truck breaks down, that's on you. If there's a problem, that's on you. The check engine light comes on. You know, you don't just pull over, phone the office and go send somebody out to fix it. That's, that's on you. Um, owner operators um, have, have run up large, like, I'm not gonna say large, but big um, bills. Know that when, when something happens, it's gonna, it's gonna cost you, a, it can cost you a lot of money. I've, I myself, I've had to replace an entire motor out of a truck. Um, I blew the motor out of my truck. The company doesn't pay for that. That that has to come out of you. That's you know that's a, that's a forty thousand dollar replacement. You better you better be able to write the check or have access to funds that can write the check um, to take care of stuff like that. Uh, being the being the owner, it, it's great. It looks good on paper and, and it's nice to have a feather in your cap that I'm an owner operator. But if you don't take care of those things or, or you're not able to take care of those things, um, your truck's going to run itself into the ground. You'll be broke in three years you won't make the three year mark. I think uh, the biggest, one of the biggest pitfalls um, in, in our business of being an owner operator is the operating expenses. Um, the price of trucks has gone up. The price of repairs has gone up. Everything that we do has gone up. The money we make has not gone up as fast to, to, to keep up with that, but it, it is slowly. Um, the biggest, I think the biggest pitfalls is our repairs. The biggest problems we have is our repairs. Uh, if you don't know when you're coming into this business what potential repairs could possibly cost you, you're in deep trouble the first time that you, you know, you, you break down on the side of the road and you call a tow truck and that guy wants 500 bucks on your credit card before he even turns a wheel just to show up. And then he gets you hooked up and then he takes you to wherever you want to go to get repaired and you get a bill for $1,200 just for a tow. Like that's, that's heart stopping the first time something like that happens. And then you get somewhere to get your truck repaired and you know, if you're lucky, you're getting presented with a bill for three, $4,000, $5,000. That's a good, we, I, I got a friend of mine, we joke around that if you can go into a Volvo dealer and come out with a bill with under, under $1,000, that's a great day. That is an awesome day. You, you do a happy dance off to the side. Um, my biggest pitfall was replacing a motor. That was 40 grand, 40,000 bucks. I blew the motor out of my truck. And it was because I was, I was pushing my equipment beyond its limits. It wasn't even the truck's fault. I have a truck that's built to do this, this, and this. And I added this, this, and this to it. And I pushed the truck beyond what it was designed to do and I blew the motor clean right out of her. And it was just pure luck for me that I broke down on the QEW exactly two miles from the Volvo dealership that I bought the truck from. I mean, you couldn't get any luckier. And I was able to limp the truck to the dealership and I, I was lucky as well because they, they cut me a break. I'd bought some trucks from them and, and done other things. But the fact of the matter is, I was not prepared when they said, okay, Bri, yeah, we can fix your truck. Here's the estimate and this is what it's gonna cost. And I'm looking at, you know, a, a number that to re just replace a motor that I bought was equal to what I bought my first truck for. 
I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God. Um, so that is a huge, huge pitfall. If you're gonna be an owner operator, investigate, talk to other guys. Like how much does this cost? You know, how much does it cost to replace a transmission? How much does it cost to replace differentials? You know, all of the things that are regular wear and tear on your truck that are, are eventually gonna wear out and break down, know up front that when it goes, this is how much it's gonna cost you. You're gonna need to have, you know, eight, 10, $12,000 to replace, you know, a transmission and a, and a differential. You know, the motor blows, depending on what kind of motor you have, you're anywhere from 25 to 40,000 bucks. Um, and you better have it because the, the dealership doesn't care. Whoever's got it, they don't care. If you can't pay it, the truck sits right there, you know, or until you can tow it and take it somewhere else and, and they can sit in your driveway. But until that motor's fixed or until the repairs are done, you're not going anywhere. In this business, you know, if you're a new owner operator, if you make it from the time you buy your truck, when you make the decision and you get everything lined up and you buy the truck, you turn the key. If you make it from there to the three year mark, Okay, and 60% and, and of owner operators, I'm not sure if that's exactly right, 60%. I think it's it maybe a little bit higher, 60 to 65% of owner operators fail within the first three years. So if you can make it from the first to the third year, you're doing well. And then from year three to year five, the, the percentage drops significantly. So the fact that I've made it past the five year mark and I'm still going, um, that is my success and the fact that I'm still able to do it today at my age and, and run, I guess, successfully. And I've got a good company behind me that I'm willing to work for. They take care of me, they treat me well. I'm willing to work and go the extra mile to make sure that they make their money. They get their value out of me. And I guess it's sort of like a marriage like that and that would be success. One of the biggest failure stories I've ever, uh, not a big failure story, but one of the, 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 the stories that, that I, I laugh at um, is I got this friend of mine and he, he's, he's about a six or, he's only been driving six or seven years, maybe eight. And he was a company driver and he kind of did it right. He was a company driver, he paid attention, he, he, learned his, he paid his dues, he learned the ropes, and then he decided he wanted to be an owner operator. Um, he didn't do a couple of things that I would have suggested that he do. He didn't spec out his truck properly. He didn't, you know, he, he didn't do those things. But he finally got his truck and the guy went nuts with chrome, lights, all the interior. He spent thousands and thousands of dollars making this truck absolutely beautiful. And it is, to look at the truck, it's gorgeous to look at. It's a really good looking truck. And then he starts having breakdowns and he can't afford the breakdowns. But he would have had about $7,000 in the bank if he hadn't slapped all this chrome and all these lights and all the, all the interior stuff. If he hadn't done all that, he'd have had seven grand sitting there. And it takes me back to when I had one of my Kenworths, I had it all chromed out. I had all the lights. I had a hardwood floor. It was absolutely beautiful. And I was showing it off. I was being cocky and I was showing it off to a guy one day. And this old man comes walking through the yard. This guy had been driving since I think Jesus was around. And he says, he sticks his head in my door of the truck. I was, you know, hey, what do you think of that? Look at that. It's beautiful and everything. He takes one look and he's, he's looking, he's looking, he sticks his head in. He's he, sticks, he pulls his head out and he looks right at me. And he goes, yeah, that's nice. He goes, but let me tell you something, son. He said, Chrome don't make you any more money and it don't make you go any faster. And you know what? <laughs> He's right. I have not chromed out another truck. Any, any Chrome that's on my truck came with the truck. I've not done anything to the interiors of my truck except to add a little couple of creature comforts, but I don't need fancy. I need a, a reliable truck that's gonna get me where I wanna go it's gonna do what I require it to do, and it's gonna satisfy the needs of the company being ET. The industry doesn't decide when you're ready. Let me just put it that way. The industry does not decide when you're ready to become an owner operator. Um, it's suggested that you become, you, you, you're a company driver, you do that for a few years. I would suggest three to five. Um, learn how to drive the truck. Learn to go everywhere run the east coast run the west coast run the middle run the mountains run the snow go up north 
uh, run Northern Ontario, run Northern Quebec when it's minus 50. Do all of that and then make the decision if you want to be an owner operator. Um, most guys, I would suggest, if you're going to be an owner operator, first of all, you're going to need your down payment and depending on what you're going to purchase or lease um, will determine how much of a down payment you need. But if you've got your down payment and then you're going to work as an owner operator, I would suggest that you don't turn a wheel until you, unless you've got at least 20 grand in the bank. $20,000 is a nice round number, number because it's not a matter of if you're going to take a breakdown, it's a matter of when. You will take breakdowns. There are, they are going to happen. It's part of the business. It's just a matter of how big of a breakdown and how much it's going to cost you. If you can sustain yourself with some money in the bank for the first year or so or a couple of years, you'll do much better. But if you're having to, if you've got $5,000 in the bank and your first breakdown is $9,000, now you're running in the red. And then you'll constantly be paying, playing catch up. And let me tell you, it happened to me at one point in my career, I was trying to play catch up. And it's very, very, very hard to dig yourself out of that hole once you're in it. It can be done and I've done it, but it's very difficult. You don't go out and shoot the wad on your first truck. You don't go out and spend $200,000 on your first truck. As a new op owner operator, you, you make some decisions. This is what I want to do and this is how long. So um, a good number for your first truck based on 2021 and, or 2020 and 2021 standards, your first truck will probably cost you anywhere between 55 and 65,000 um, bucks. And with that, most of the companies are going to want 10% down. If you're lucky, you can get it 5% down, but most of them want 10% down. So now you're looking at, you know, 5,500 to 6,500 bucks as your down payment. And you have to figure into the equation, where am I going to be working? Does that company have the miles and the works that I can sustain a payment of this amount? You know, you have a 60,000, let's say you have a $60,000 truck, you buy a 60,000, there's going to be tax on top of that. There's administration fees there's there's a whole bunch of things that go with that by the time you got a sixty thousand dollar truck you've now got a seventy thousand dollar truck after everything's done now i'm gonna bring how quickly do i want to pay that off do i want to pay that off in a in a two-year lease do i want to pay it off in a three-year lease do i break it out to five years the longer your lease the less your payment's going to be each month but the more interest in term you're going to pay in the end you take a you take a sixty thousand dollar truck and lease it out for five years by the time the, by the time you bought paid the, made the last payment, you've paid for that truck twice over. If you if you break it down into a shorter payment, you may maybe to make a, a higher monthly payment, but break it down and say a three year lease, which I suggest if you're going to uh, as a new owner operator make your first deal three years. So you need to find a company that's going to sustain you with a payment of anywhere from eighteen hundred dollars to say two thousand dollars that's a comfortable number you can run that you can run and make that kind of money and sustain yourself so the first vehicle again it all it, it, it's all up to you as well it's how, how hard do you want to work you know if you if you're a single guy and you're living by yourself you don't own a house you don't have kids you don't have a wife hey go buy a big truck get a five thousand dollar a month truck payment and live in the truck guys do it all the time would i do it i don't suggest it i don't do it um, my payment is where I need it to be for the life that I live to sustain my family and work for a company. I was green. I didn't have a whole lot of people there to help me to, to pick, but I guess I got lucky because the first truck I had um, was a, just a small Kenworth and uh, I was terrified. It was, it was really intimidating having to deal with sales guys and uh, my first truck was 42,000 bucks. And back then in 2006, like that was a lot of money for me. And that was a lot of a commitment uh, to do. That was a day cab, two and a half years of driving the day cab. I then went to a highway unit. Um, so it was a bigger truck with the sleeper. And uh, again, it was more money. It was a new, another newer truck. So it was more money. And again, um, but it, you learned some lessons of what you didn't do right the first time when it came to purchasing the truck or, or leasing the truck and the options and, and, and the specifications of the vehicle or, or, and what you're going to be doing with it. So you kind of apply a little bit of that, what you've learned to the next one and so much and so forth. And then after that, I bought the third truck, another highway, the rest of them are all highway trucks and, and it's the same thing. And, uh, 
The truck I'm in now, I'm just about finished with and I'll be transitioning out of this truck probably shortly and into another new truck, hopefully my last truck, the one I'm gonna retire out of. When I buy the last truck, it's gonna be spec the way I want it. I'll have it what I want, transmission, differentials, fuel tanks, um, everything, motor, horsepower, all, all the little intricacy things that make up the truck so that your, your truck is best equipped for the job that you're doing. Things that I didn't know years and years and years ago that I know now, that actually by doing so and knowing these and applying these will save you money because you'll have the right truck for what you wanna do. The Peterbilts are well built, the Kenworths are well built, they're nice trucks, but they're, they're not what I want for, they're not equipped and they're not the best truck for doing what I, what I wanna do. Um, the Volvos are more aerodynamic, um, I find, and this is just my personal opinion, and some of it is market, and, and but the motors on the Volvos are, are, are more efficient. You get better mileage out of them. You get better wear out of them. They, they drive better. Um, and they're just, they're comfortable trucks. Uh, I just want to be comfortable in my last truck. If you're thinking of doing this and you're serious about it, we didn't have this option back when I started, but one of the greatest uh, options that you've got available to you today is the internet. The internet is fantastic. It is, it, obviously we all know what it is and we know what it does, but there's so much information. There's a lot of, there are a lot of bloggers out there in the trucking, for the trucking industry. There's a lot of information in there about trucks. You know, when you go to spec and buy and purchase and, and do your trucks, research them online, right? Everything you wanna know about every truck that's ever been manufactured in the history of the world is online somewhere and you can find out about it. Use the internet. Um, as much as this pains me to say, um, Facebook. Facebook for me is, 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 yeah, it's something that you look at once in a while and it's funny you talk to your friends, but I belong to trucking pages, you know, Facebook pages uh, in the trucking industry. There's, you know, I drive a Volvo, so I belong to a couple of Volvo pages, but I also belong to um, the Canadian truckers pages. I belong to flat bedding pages. I belong to, and, when you do that, it's not just going in and, and looking and just, oh, this is funny and that's cute and there's a cute little antidote. A lot of the old timers, or a lot of the guys that are in there are willing to share information with you freely. You know, you can see something that maybe somebody else is dealing with on their truck and you can go, oh, and you can PM them or you can go on the page and, and talk. And most of the time they're, they're willing to talk to you and they'll give it to you for free. Whereas before you got to take your truck to the dealership and have some guy plug it in and tell you this and that and that, or, or they got, it takes them two hours to find out what that squeak was and it turns out all you had to do was turn a screw. You know, um, I've saved myself thousands over the years using the internet and all the resources that it opens up to me. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And for more great tips on, on the trucking industry and what we do in this business, um, subscribe to the ET channel.